Good morning. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little story. Now, you know my thoughts on psychic mediums, people who every single missing person talks to them, etc. They have insight into everything. They could solve every case. Um, but what I'm going to tell you um, is a personal story and <laughs> this is what happened to me recently and just as a little aside or background, um, as a child, I think like a lot of children, I was very just in tune with the other, you know, um, just having senses of things, knowing things that you shouldn't know, or just, just, just weird shit, and um, I was a very strange child, <laughs> and through my teens and twenties and, and thirties, I guess you'd call it cold reading, but I used to read people, I used to be able to sort of know things about them, and a lot of what I knew, I, I really didn't want to, it wasn't pleasant often, um, and sometimes I would talk with people about what I sort of um, saw or sensed, and sometimes just conversationally and you know cheekily at parties you know I'd do cold reading and things like that and I got away from that because I didn't like you know when you because we can choose who and what we exchange energy with and what we share energy with and sometimes you just don't want to look it's kind of like you know why would you buy music that you don't like I guess so I stopped and pulled away because it also started feeling very burdensome and I still will do something where I'll say you know I'll look for signs and that can be all this confirmation bias and things like that and you know but it is it's funny what happens um, when you do ask for things um, but again, I haven't done that for a long time either. Anyway, the story is um, a friend of mine whom I met a few years ago. We were living in the same suburb of Brisbane and my friend Rita, she's Hungarian. And she really just, you know, <laughs> she fell in love with my little dog, you know, um, carnival dog and with carnivore kitten and even to the point where even though um, carnival dog can be pretty scary she she would look after him when I was away and things like that and when she was having issues and, and working really hard had all sorts of catering jobs and things trying to get money to um, go back to Hungary to care for her mum you know loaned her my car and you know, Rita was always very, she was very independent, an independent thinker, and you couldn't really give her much advice. Um, and I think there were ways that she did things that made it a bit hard for her um, before she went home. But before she did go to Hungary, she, she got her citizenship here, and it was a beautiful, happy day, and she had a lovely party by the beach, and she was gloriously happy. But she had to go home to Hungary to care for her mother in Budapest. Um, mother that wasn't so kind to her, who was a, a burden emotionally. Um, she was a cruel person. Maybe narcissistic, I'm not sure. And Rita, because she's a dutiful and wonderful person, she, she's 
packed up her life here. She's put things in storage, a lot of things that she's paid for storage for two years, three years, because uh, she's wanted to come back to Australia and just get on with her life again. And, you know, we would have traveled around Australia together and just gone hiking and maybe had some sort of traveling holiday together um, as friends do, you know. Uh, Rita's gone home and I think the burden has been such that she's she's gotten breast cancer and the cancer, probably because she wasn't paying much attention to herself, it's spread it spread quickly and it's got into other parts of her body and then it's gotten into her brain after she's been having what she was calling you know her, her life juice she had to think of it as her life juice um as this harsh therapy that she was having um, when the cancer got into her brain she was she was exhausted and tired and, and Rita's always been very spiritual. She's always been on just her own quest, just a very internalized person in some regards, and just always striving to to advance spiritually in her own way and to advance herself in her learning. Um, so she was Ekanka is her spiritualist belief, Ekanka, and you know, um, she would chant Hu, H-U, just like in the front of human, Hu every morning, and you know, her spiritual beliefs were very important to her, and I think at the end though, with her brain cancer, she's relied on that and not treatment. Um, anywho, so, you may have seen, I don't know if I did actually, post it there's a lot of little clips I make and I don't post them but we have Remembrance Day on November the 11th and that's the the day that I'd chosen for one of my cat's birthdays he, he passed in a horrible fashion as did another cat Poppy and as did another cat Autumn so you know Peggy Remembrance Day and I've done some filming for Remembrance Day it's where we remember all those who have sacrificed their lives in all wars since World War One, and the next day, November the 12th, I was doing some yard work and I just picked up this Buddha that Rita had actually given me. It it was actually just this grey colour. It's just like a plaster Buddha that was, you know, grey. So it was made out to be as if it were stone. And I don't know what came over me. I just spray painted it white. And and then that didn't seem to be enough. And I picked up, I got some gold acrylic paint, a tube of this. And I just poured it into my hand. And I slathered <laughs> this gold paint all over this Buddha. And for a couple of weeks, I hadn't been wanting to talk to Rita. This is so wrong. And she, Rita is the most open-hearted, loving, beautiful person who always just, just pours love onto her friends. She sends you hugs and adoration and just adores you. And every time we'd speak we'd FaceTime we'd, we'd done that a bit more recently than normal because I've been trying to take care of her storage unit Rita wanted her things she wanted to get some of her things with her and I went through every night for a while through her taxi box of things going over every darn item and choosing what we were going to send over to her overseas to Hungary um, and on October 29th when Kitten died I, I couldn't talk to Rita after this I, I should have but I hadn't wanted to tell her that am I gonna run out of time on this the story is longer than I thought <laughs> I hadn't wanted to tell her that Kitten was dead because I didn't want the compassion from Rita she I should have been giving Rita my compassion she's suffering she's in pain she must be frightened 
And I also didn't want to break her heart over little Kitten. Kitten who was so beautiful and wild and um, someone who Rita always wanted to see. Where's Kitten? And I would always get Kitten and show her Kitten and she would send Kitten love. And she'd want to see Rocky and send, you know, carnival dog love. And it just, I don't know, there's something, there is something so wrong with me because I, I struggle with, you know, human connection at times and I'm very socially anxious and I'm, I'm just a weirdo and I'm inconsistent. And I feel a lot of shame over this, but, you know... The 50 times that I thought I, I want to connect with Rita and I didn't over these two weeks. Anyway, so we get to November the 12th and I'm painting this Buddha and then I noticed that Beatrix, this lady Beatrix from Hungary had tried to get hold of me and she'd messaged me and... I called her a few days after painting this Buddha and she tells me Rita has died. Rita's dead. And, you know, I'm heartbroken and I, I'm gutted. And I can't talk to Beatrice much at this time because it was a, an awkward time of night there. It was the middle of the night, but it was the very early morning here and she said you know well look just light a candle for Rita you know light a candle and, and think of her and, and we'll talk later can we talk in a couple of days so I decided there and then I'd go into a church in the city into a big stone church it's a catholic church which doesn't really suit Rita I guess with her spiritual belief but I knew I could go in and light a candle there and I could go and sit in reflection and I decided to go in for a mass time. I went in, I lit the candle and I stayed for the mass and I get the little booklet that they have that tell you the prayers of the day and what psalms and um, Catholic Church, they have saints and a saint of that day for the mass to be held, it will be to do with the saint and the saint on this day was Saint Elizabeth of Hungary she's the the patron saint of, of those in poverty and you know and Rita had gone back and when she left hung Hungary initially she had owned two apartments very small the size of shipping containers like they are over there but she owned them and she'd been a professional woman she'd come here traveling she'd met someone she'd married divorced um, just fallen absolutely in love with Australia. She'd done a lot of study here. She'd struggled to have a professional career here. But I think her introspection and, and some somehow, I don't know, I think, I think a lot of things that she did, I think it was a bone of contention within her marriage. I don't know. He wanted to be more outward and less introspective. Anywho, I digress and I don't really know about that, but I just know that she wanted me to destroy her wedding book <laughs> when we found it in the container and she's wanted me to sell her wedding dress in the past. For some reason, no one would buy it and it was it's absolutely delicious. It's a gold living silk dress and I still have it. I don't know what to do with it, but I think I'm going to do something I might burn it for her because she certainly wanted to leave her marriage behind it was very painful to her to think of it and you know you just think of these synchronicities don't you you know when I, I took a photo of uh, this Buddha when I painted it and the, yesterday talking to Beatrice I said hang on a minute I just have to look at something and I looked up when I'd taken the photo, and this was November the 12th, and I just think, you know, I've gone into the church and I've lit this candle for, for Rita on the day I found out, and it's just St. Elizabeth's Day, and yeah. I mean, you just want to believe, you want to know that this brief spark of physical existence and this consciousness, this can't be it with infinity 
behind you and in, ahead of you, you know, this long good night. <laughs> you, you don't want to think of loved ones as nothingness, you know, and especially when they've been suffering. Rita's in her 40s, she's young, she's a beautiful person inside and out. She had so much she wanted to do and experience still in life and you don't want to think of your loved ones as gone. You know, my mother has a very strong faith, a Christian faith, which, you know, she's a she's stalwart about and she... <laughs> um, but, you know, I found out the other day she's afraid of death. And, you know, and it's, you know, people having faith for all sorts of reasons. Is it to, to comfort? Everyone is afraid of death. I don't care what they say. Everybody is. I mean, I am. I have panic attacks about it. I, I've learned to control how I feel about it, but it's my greatest fear, really. And, I mean, I think with good reason. People should be afraid of death, of course we are. But what if it's, you know, what if we come into this world from um, our spiritual existence and we go back into that and, you know, because don't you feel like sometimes, you know, people, you do seem to have these different connections with people or how do you know things about various people or... <sighs> Why are you sharing the earth with people you, you do? Why, why are you making the choices you make? Why do you have the experiences you have? I mean, I don't know. Was Rita somehow connecting with me and telling me what had happened and just being there with me for some small moment? Does she understand why I wouldn't talk to her? I mean, she had a brain tumour. She had brain cancer. She was out of it for months before she died and um, some of the last lucid moments that she had taking the last strength she had were some precious hours that we spent FaceTiming um, as we went through her things and she got to tell me just some things about it, what was special to her and I got to see Things that she had held dear and held on to. Some of it we had to laugh at. It's like you paid storage for this, you know. But she'd ended up selling her homes and the last of her money went into what she called was a healing centre. I should have known. It was a palliative care home. She went there to, to die. <laughs> but... I don't know, for the, the sake of my own comfort, I mean, I mean, Beatrice was, you know, she knows how out of it she was. She says, look, Rita was exhausted. She could do nothing but try to go through the process of dying and, and try to cope with that. She was frightened, but she was, you know, she had her spiritual beliefs and I, I really think that got her through and... You know, she was at the point where morphine is not enough, you know, to quell any pain. Um, and she, she would have been on large, large doses in the last couple of days. She slept apparently the last day, most of the day. Um, but, you know, I'd like to think that there was some moments, I don't know why, and I certainly just wasn't thinking about her at the time, even though, of course, I was aware this is Rita's Buddha, I don't know why I held on to it. It was old and I kept knocking it over. It was, you know, taking the little bobbles off its head and things. But I'd always held on to it. And then I'd... These, these ugly little Torian wooden carvings here. This one I got when I was in Nana Glen. Um, just before I met Rita. And I always thought, what an odd little thing. And this guy where I was renting this place on this land there, next to Russell Crowe's um, high, uh, farm, actually. I was down there and I was trying to heal from a broken relationship. I was sort of running away a little bit, really. And I didn't have my... Well, I had my dog. I'd finally... I'd gone back and I'd gotten my dog with me. And I had him with me at this property. And it was midwinter. We're talking... Oh, we're in the hills 
This is mid coast of East Australia. Beautiful on the coast with headland beach, headland beach, and it was glorious. And but for this little part of the time there, I was staying at Nana Glen on this little bit of land, and I'd go for these rambles in the misty mornings and the icy grass with with carnivore dog down the highways and down to the little hamlets and things and roaming around and you know I saw a mythical black fox there one time out there um but the man I was renting from me had this thing I picked it up one day and he goes oh a fucking ugly thing and I kept it <laughs> he said you can have it I couldn't bear for this thing to be there and be unloved and unappreciated and you know what the other day at a little shop that I never go to but I went in the other day just before softball and got some lollies and a cold drink and I had carnivore dog with me and what did I find but this it's the same it might it could have been carved in the same village or by the same person it's like the parent it's got the same everything except it's got the horn grooves and the hair on its back and look and look oh see i've knocked this one over and i've taken its little hoofs off sometimes it keeps falling over and now it's not balancing as well because i've done that but see how they are supposed to be together it's not alone anymore and, it, and it's funny i found this and this gave me very strange comfort you know when you feel like your life is what the hell are you doing with life and, and you think, this can't possibly be what I'm supposed to be doing. And you get these funny moments in time where you feel like, well, I mean, maybe I'm right where I need to be for some very strange reason. Um, even though I have nothing here and I don't have family here and, you know... Um, yeah, it's it's so weird. And yet there is this bullock. I wish I could show you how how alike they are. The same wood, whatever it is, it might just be some merbel or something. Um ooh, look look at that. Isn't that bizarre? Years later, years and years later in another city look at their faces the way they're looking up their eyes look at that and i found them so maybe there's a purpose i mean it's like when um you know i sometimes post things not all of them but i often i'll be doing something i never plan to do just out of the blue i go a different way on a cycle or a walk or i'll just just something and i'll find a creature that needs me <laughs> it might be a bird that's been hit on the road or a bat or um, something and um, it happens often a beetle or a butterfly something that just needs help and um, I don't know maybe it's kind of like this look at these two it moved me so much and I actually went back and asked the lady in the shop who is um, Malaysian I think I said, oh, can you please tell me about that? Because the funny thing is, I found, you know, I've got one from long ago, a few years ago, just randomly at this place I stayed with, you know. And she said, oh, my husband, he just clicks anything. He can't help it. He just has so much stuff. And that's why, I mean, it's a funny little corner store that sells, you know, milk and papers and cigarettes and um, cold drinks. And then she's just got all these bizarre knickknacks and it was the funniest thing. I'd, n I'd never been into her store. I went in and I saw this. And it was $15 and I just bought it. <laughs> um, and look at them. It's like they're reunited. So, you know, maybe maybe Rita was with me. And does, doesn't, doesn't blame me for not speaking with her one more time not calling her to tell her I love her to not tell her that I did treasure her and 
what a special person I think she is. And to give us, offer some, I don't know, I couldn't have comforted her, but to know that I was thinking of her, I feel so selfish. But isn't that weird? Don't you find that so strange that I just decided to trans, you know, it's like I expressed her transcendence from the grey slate colour of the paint, you know, this plaster Buddha that was made to look like sort of, you know, just grey stone. And I, I painted it as transcended in this glowing white and the gold on the day that she died. And I went to church and I lit a candle for her and it was the day of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary and Rita's Hungarian and back in Budapest and that's where she passed. Yeah, so I just wanted to tell you a story. That's my story. Sorry for my voice. I sound, you know, I'm a bit obviously emotional. So, you know, a little bit uh, choked and... Um, nasal we shall say uh but thanks for listening um i've got two minutes left of recording on my phone so didn't intend to make this story time so long um but you know lo <sighs> yeah rita never did get her things it was funny the lady at Parkinson, she screwed it up. She never invoiced, tax invoiced her, so she knew what to pay. I didn't know the stuff had been sent. She'd picked it up, so now I've got her actually organised to get her suitcases, cases, and and the things that we went through painstakingly over several nights. I've got to get it back, um, and work out what to do with it, you know, and see if there's anything that people want. Um, they don't seem to want too many attached, you know, things. Of her, they seem quite pragmatic about send, not sending stuff and spending money. So a lot of it, it's going to be donated. I might send off, you know, I might choose a few things just to send over. So if anyone wants them, they've got something. Because some of those things I know, they were just special to Rita. So they might, it might be nice if it's there, if it, make it makes it back to Hungary. Yeah, what a fucked year, eh? Thanks for those of you that have been, oh, here we go, minus my time. Thanks for those of you who've listened to me all year. I've talked about anxiety, body image, alcohol misuse and treatment. I've gotten into true crime. Um, I've just posted about animals and my silly thoughts. And you're always there to listen. And I, I really love you for it. Thanks a lot. Bye.